<laughs> Quick bike change. Oh, all right. All right, Peter. Go, 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 go. I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over in Taichung in Taiwan and um, we've come over to see where all our bikes are being made at the Factor factory. Very indiscreet, no big branding here, no craziness, but this is where the magic happens. Who's that guy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to put my tours, tours in there too. Tours, tours, welters. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have all day, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to take a little longer. Do you remember? <laughs> 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 Door. Door. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need Walter. We need Walter. Jira. 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 You see how the seat post is now directly uh, behind. So what load? What load is that putting on? 780 meters. So 780 kilos. Okay. Amazing looking at the flex. So everything is attached, yeah. fixed there. But the movement you see there—that's how much an extremely stiff bike <laughs> is flexing. This machine is from Switzerland, a very expensive piece of equipment, but it uh, it really makes you know life a lot easier. Vacuum on here, so it sucks the carbon down onto the vacuum, and then a little knife runs around the carbon, and it's cutting the shapes that are needed for the particular frame for this particular material. And so you can see that most of these shapes are a little bit, you know, odd. They're not squares, they're not strips. They're all kind of, you know, designed for exactly what they need to be doing. And then they're all numbered. And so what that is, is that's the sequence that they're used in the next operation. And what she's doing here is eventually this will become one frame in a bag. This is styrofoam, it's called EPS polystyrene. These are silicone. Um, we bring this all together to create what we call a preform. And so this is what they start to put the carbon fiber layers onto. This ends up getting melted out of the frame after it's finished uh, curing. This was a technology I developed with my team about 12 years ago that we were the first now that it's everywhere in the industry. But um, you know, it took a long time to figure out how to get something that was very rigid that could be removed later. And so when you look at the most bikes from most factories, what they're doing is they're not using this technology though, because this is about 25 US dollars that all ends up in the garbage can mm -hmm. at the end. So they only use this technology on maybe their high end frame, their highest level, but you know, on their more normal level, they're just kind of using slip joints to just kind of slide everything yeah. together. So then there's a lot of overlaps and things like that. We can't have any overlaps in our frames because they're so light. So, yeah. so it all starts with this technology. You see, this one is just getting started because it has the text stream. This is then the first layer of text stream, which she's already put onto that. And now she's starting to put the other layers on. What they, they're using this, which is actually 3D printed to continually put the layer on, return it to here, making sure that there's no wrinkles or anything. And then there's also, it's kind of hard to know, but a lot of these are actually information about exactly where things need to be. Yeah. And so, you know, it's like these, these two are telling you exactly where the water bottle holes are. 
So that's, you know, they put it there and then they'll reinforce exactly that area without having to reinforce the entire part. Oh, wow. But you can see now how much hand labor goes into this. It's all done by hand. It's, it's, yeah. it's actually, I mean, yeah, yeah. you think that's yeah. pretty now, much. When you look at this huge piece of fiber, almost no one in the industry would use such a big piece like that. Of, you know, they would use a bunch of strips. Yeah. You know, but there's a, you know, one continuous piece of fiber that's going to cover the entire down tube. So now, now that those, that's more uh, structural, structurally strong yeah. carbon fibers on the bottom, now it's being covered with the... Um, what it is, no, actually the, the texturing is actually not all that strong. It's very good in torsional, for torsional rigidity. Okay. So it's put there, but really it's, it's, it's a lot of the weight control comes by using the texturing as those innermost layers, which don't do that much. The innermost layers are doing like the least amount of work in, okay. the, in the product. That, as you get further out, that's where you want your stiffer fibers. But so they're really just kind of taking up space, um, but oh, okay. very, yes. very light. Yeah, yeah. got you. And the other thing is, you know, while she's making it look like this is all very random, <laughs> she's following a you know a sequence. Yeah. Of, it's about 120 steps. But she's also been trained in exactly how to do this, and most of these people have been working here a very long time. Well, and the and the melting, the melting of the the inner. Oh, that happens. That? that happens straight away because styrofoam has a very low melting point, and so as soon as the carbon fiber starts to cure, the styrofoam is 90% water. So okay. that styrofoam, which looks really big right now, will become like this big when uh, as soon as it starts to heat up. Wow. It's about four hours, for her, three to four hours, depending on you know uh, the complexity to build one front triangle like this. And so we have these three ladies that that's what they're doing, yeah. and then we have the other ladies that are building the rear stays of the bike. Uh, these are the bottom brackets. Yeah. So what he's doing here is took that part, goes into the mold, which is already a little bit hot. Um, is connecting air now. So these are the air couplings. This will get closed up. It goes into a heated press. It gets slowly, the temperature goes from, it's like 65 degrees now to 150 degrees. The air is slowly um, pushed into it through the bladders and then it takes the shape of the mold. And so everything pushes out into the mold. And then the resin, which is in the material, some of it will get pushed out as well. The material starts at like about a 40% concentration of resin. When it's done, it's about 30%. And that's what you want to have happen, is you want the resin to get pushed out, because then that means the, the carbon fiber is all really well fused together. This is what it looks like when it comes out, yeah, out of the press. Pretty close to this. Um, they've already drilled some holes in it, a couple of holes. Um, but yeah, it pretty much, comes out like that, but they've also already removed the, the inner lining stuff on this one. Now that you've seen the mold, now you actually know that's where that insert in the mold is. Yeah, got you. Yeah, this is just resin, this gets sanded off later, so.
Right, first event here in Singapore. We're uh, a three-up team time trial. Myself, Cav, and Peter Sagan. But small change. The bike we're using this time is a traditional trishaw. Three laps of the roundabout here, and uh, taking it in turns. Um, quick, quick changeovers as well. So, Mark's ready. This could go very wrong now we've got that racing element to it last year was a little bit more relaxed it was a bit of a, a city tour last year on the tri shores racing around a roundabout this is not going to end well quick bike change oh, all right all right peter look at this guy yeah Right, so no breaking, right? <laughs> Good job, man. Peter's even shaved his legs for this. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Taking it seriously. Right break. That was two minutes, 49, three, three laps, three laps of this roundabout. Next up, we've got a team of uh, Jasper and Tade. Let's see what they've got. Ready for this? Okay, you ready? <laughs> I think no, but let, let's try. Let's try. Oh, he's already got the technique nailed here. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we've got some, some questions, I guess, a uh, quiz show on Singlish, Singapore words in English and what they mean. Could be pretty interesting as a lot, quite a few guys here don't even speak English. Yeah, especially Kev. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his English is terrible. You have to repeat this, the whole phrase. So Mark will say, how to win my entire punch it. And then you have to repeat it, and then you have to guess what punch it means. Very good. <laughs> so what I need to say, how to read? How to read? So you, you will read it first, and then he echoes you. And yeah, okay. It's gonna be a different one. Yeah. Okay. How to win now? My tire punching. And I need to repeat. Yes. <laughs> ah, but without. Okay. How to win now? My tire is punching. So what? What does punching mean? What do you think? Punching is my tire. Yeah, punching. Ding ding ding. Good job. Let's go. Bro, your bike very fast. <laughs> so, so Mark, you have to guess what Chen means. You too. Some time later. You race, yeah. you race. Okay, no. So not correct, but it's basically modified. So you you make it faster. Ah, 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 ah. France Prudential Singapore Gadero. Them. Shukla. I'm gonna repeat the phrase and then uh, through the France Prudential Cr Singapore Criterium. Dam Shukla. So what does shuk mean? I think shock means uh, cool. Uh, I'll give it to you. So shock means basically satisfying or awesome. Them shock. All right, yes. not far off. Yeah, you. <laughs> you can do it. Okay, so Peter, you repeat it. Maybe jiayu. You can do it. So you have to guess what jiayu means. Well, jiayu. One million zillion jillion dillion cotillion times later. Like uh, keep going. You can do it. Yeah, perfect. So like uh, it exactly means add fuel. Yeah, like, yeah so come on. So good job. You, you did it. That was the best guess. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. nice. Ready for the first event, our team time trial coming up. But this time, my teammates, I've got Peter Sagan. She caught it. Ciao, ciao. He's ready. And superstar cab over there. And I'm racing a new bike today for the first time. And this it's cool. It is very, very cool. Check it out. Next time through, he'll take the belt. 
400 metres to go. Chris Froome now moves through to the front. Four times Tour de France champion, double Vuelta winner and the winner of the Giro d'Italia. The only man in the field to take all of the Grand Tours. And Froome now dragging back Tade Pogaccia. They take the bell. Just finished up the crit. It's always cool coming back over here, getting to see some some friends who I met last year. Hello, everyone. Remember this guy, the caviar king? Yes, I am. See me again. <laughs> We've had great great crowds coming. It's definitely a bigger bigger event this year. More people have come out to watch. So uh, this 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 is definitely growing, and definitely seems like there's. Uh, a rise in cycling over here in Singapore it was really fast, really, really fast. <laughs> the race was really fast. Um, 60 k's. Uh, these these crits definitely don't get any easier. They get faster every year, <laughs> or I'm just getting older every year. Um, it was quite a technical course, so being in the break was. Uh, definitely a lot easier, but getting 40, 50 guys through those corners, it was just one big, one big elastic the whole, the whole race. We've got an after, after party this evening. We'll get out to see some of the the sights of of Singapore, then head over to Japan in a couple of days' time for the Saitama Criterium. So here we are back at the Saitama Criterium. Got a signing session with Egan and Tade. He's ready for it, ready for it. Here we've got all the fans, come out. It's just, it's just always, always so eye-opening coming over here. The level of attention, the level of detail that these fans go to, it's, it's just next level. You can just see how, how passionate they are about the race. So it's, it's a really cool experience for, for them to, to get, a, get, a, get a small taste of the Tour de France through the Criterium. This year I think it's, it's probably going to be the biggest one of, of them all so far. I think everyone here is... Yeah, we are. <laughs> So joining us this year on the Legends Legends team here in at the Saitama Criterium, we've got the one and only Adam Hansen. Now in a new role as CPA president, representing riders and most importantly safety. It's one of the big issues on everyone's everyone's minds at the moment. I guess Adam's most known for how many grand tours did you do back to back? Twenty grand tours, so that's Giro Tour of Walter. 20, oh, not 20 times, seven, almost seven times, seven years running. I, I don't think that record will ever, ever be pre beaten in, in pro cycling. No one's going to be that, that mental um, to do it again. Maybe if uh, that guy had been on a bike, he'd, he'd have done something like that. Several minutes of DD craziness later. No. <laughs> uh, Adam's having a laugh. He didn't know Didi was German. He he thought he was he was French. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so apart from doing 20 grand tours straight, which is just mind blowing, he's been making a, a whole bunch of his own equipment. He's making a few bikes on the side now, but he's been making his own shoes for years. Check these bad boys out. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Adam was just saying the the lightest pair he's ever made was just over 70 grams a shoe. 76 grams is the lowest one. So, uh, 76 go. grams. Yeah. And I raced that um, in the Giro a few times. Oh, that's mental. The that's only mental. problem with uh, the super large shoes is it's very fragile and in the suitcase, uh, I cracked a few. But while oh. riding, it's like an eggshell. Yeah. So, 
when you apply the power, it's okay, but when you don't apply the power, that's a problem. So training shoes are a bit heavier, but the lightest ones are super light. No, oh, incredible, incredible, an amazing engineer as well, software developer on the side. Yeah, pleasure having you on board, mate. Thank you. That's a wrap on the Saitama Criterion this year. Racing was great actually, it's probably the, the warmest I can ever remember it out here in Japan. When I first came to this event just on 10 years ago, I mean it was it was popular then, it was popular to have all the all the Tour de France riders in, in town, but it's it's just grown so much over the last 10 years and it's, a, it's an even bigger race now. So I've never seen so many fans out here. It's just, uh, it was a great atmosphere out on the roads and it feels like People here have got a real connection with the Tour de France and so many of so many of its riders. I've got to run, I can see a few people, people have got a special edition through me. Pinarello, one of my older bikes, uh, for me to sign. 2015, okay. You are, you are winner model. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>